Now that we've talked about different types of electric motors, we're going to dive deeper into servo motors specifically and how to understand their speed torque curves. Over the next few episodes, we're going to go into this in depth and we're going to be talking about specific performance problems that people may have that helps to understand how they operate. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. I hope this helps. Reach out to us at this email address and website here if you want some help and want to talk about an application. First, the performance questions that we eventually are going to answer is, why is my motor overheating? Or why don't I get as much speed as I should? Or why don't I get as much torque as I should? And why did my motor burn up when it's only operating in the continuous region of the curve? And how can I check my motor's temperature? But we need to understand the basics. So let's look at a few speed torque curves, for example. Here's one. You look here, and this curve here is what's called the continuous region. And this is called a peak region. So if we look at another one, this one has two sets of regions. That's because it operates at different voltages. At, let's say, 110 volts AC, it might get here. And at 240 volts AC, it's going to get twice as much speed here. This one shows a lot more detail. You can see different voltages here, so you get different uh, speed capabilities based upon the bus voltage. And these different thermal curves are all based upon the thermal assumptions and the heat sinks and the airflow. And we're going to be talking more about this and why that is. Occasionally you see ones, this is flipped around and backwards, occasionally you see ones where the speed is up here on the side and the torque is across the bottom. I don't see those very often. Every once in a while it kind of throw me for a loop just because the shape is a little bit different. But just keep an eye out for that. So let's go back to this one. Here's the continuous, like I said, at this voltage. This is the continuous. This is what it can do all day, every day, without having to worry about duty cycle. The further we go above this line here, we get into this peak region, and our duty cycle is limited. Down here, we might be able to do it for minutes at a time, but up here, we can only do it for seconds at a time, lest the motor gets too hot. But if we're running with a higher bus voltage, we have even more continuous here and more uh, peak here. The current that is available affects how much torque capability we have here, how much current the drive can put out, and how much bus voltage the drive has. That's the voltage potential that is inside the drive in the PWM sw switching frequency. Go back to a previous episode to understand that. That bus voltage capability is what uh, defines this here. And again, at this higher voltage, we get more continuous and more peak there. If we take a look at this speed torque curve here that is far more detailed, you can see the different voltage curves that we get. Uh, so different voltages give us different ca uh, speed capabilities. This may be 200 volts AC, maybe this is 208, 230, 240, something like that. If this is 240 here, then there's going to be a 120 curve here. Now, if you remember the way the drive works, 120 volts AC is rectified to 170 volts DC. So 240 volts AC gets rectified to 340 volts DC. So these curves don't necessarily equate the AC power that you're looking at. you got to rectify it up to the DC voltage. So then we look at these curves here, and... I made a comment a moment ago about the current affecting them. Yes, the current does limit how much your torque can be, but it also has thermal limitations. So how much torque you can get continuously is all about making sure the motor doesn't overheat. So a motor with a good heat sink can run continuously longer than a motor can that doesn't have a good heat sink. A motor that is air-cooled can run longer than one that is not air-cooled. One that's water-cooled can even run longer than the one that is air-cooled. So it's all about heat dissipation, getting that heat out of the motor. And so that is why the thermal characteristics affect here. And, and this particular curve looks at the, the different uh, rise in temperature and the different heat sinks and the, the different assumptions that are made. So this one right here, this assumption is a pretty limited uh, um, continuous duty cycle, whereas you get a longer, bigger duty cycle up here. But then above this one, it's all 
FFP. So we really have to keep in mind what the application is of the motor. If the motor is in a box where there's no airflow at all, it's not going to get nearly as much heat dissipation as one that is out in the open with a fan blowing air across it. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. I hope that helps. Reach out to us here at this website and email address and see if we can help you out.